Do you know that you're working on a new exciting project, you do your technical research, install and set up everything and it's working fine. But after some weeks or months you need to recap that or need to change something and you just try to remember, well, what the hell did I do there? I better have written that down somewhere. So to be honest with you, most people including myself don't like to write technical documentation because it sometimes seems boring or just distracts you from just getting things done. But believe me, it's much more important to write technical documentation than you probably might think now. So let me explain why that is and also come up with some great tips how to write good technical documentation. And I also will show you the software and tools I personally used. So if you want to know all that, keep watching. Hi everybody, my name is Christian and welcome to The Digital Life, the right place for you to start your IT career, achieve new skills and learn how to become a real IT professional. So I always do great videos and tutorials where I talk about topics that will help you to accelerate your IT career and also technologies that matter to enterprise companies. I always do live streaming on YouTube and Twitch where you can just come around and ask me any questions. So if that sounds amazing to you, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. In this video we want to talk about technical documentation. And I know that probably sounds boring to some of you guys, but trust me, it is much more interesting and important than you probably might think now, so let me explain. And we first want to discuss why do we write technical documentation, so why should you do that? So. A technical documentation is to document any product or project related information. So that can be for project that is still in development or also already in production. So just think of any API documentation, network documentation or instruction manuals, user guides, anything like this. So most people think that technical documentation is just a dry text that is complicated and only IT specialists with relevant education can read and understand. But that is actually not true. A good technical documentation is written in simple language and we use a lot of visual elements to make that excitingly. So for example, we use infographics, uh, network diagrams, we use uh, videos in some cases. Because nobody really wants to read a long and complicated text and it really doesn't help anybody. So especially when you work in a company and you work in a small or medium sized team, it is absolutely necessary to have a good technical documentation. But also if you're just working for yourself, you work on your private home lab or you want to do a technical research, study for your IT certifications and so on, you should always document your process because trust me, you won't remember everything you did a few weeks or months ago. So no matter if you just want to recap that later or if you want to share that information with somebody else, it really helps you to document everything. And I just can encourage you to build up your own knowledge base to document what you learn along your IT career because you can also share this to anybody else. You can show up that in your resume if you have a good documentation that helps you a lot. And I personally, I don't enjoy so much the process of writing technical documentation, but I know that it's absolutely necessary to help me understand certain topics or to just share that information with you on YouTube or anywhere else. So it really is much, much more important than you probably might think now. Let me also come up with some tips how to write good technical documentation because I know that is not so easy. So if you want to do that, you're writing technical documentation, you always should start with outline your topics and structure. And always think of the readers first. So who is the reader? Who are you writing to? What language should you use? And also think of topics and structure that is interesting to the reader. So whenever somebody reads your documentation, he wants to achieve a goal. So that goal can be use a specific product or understand a topic or recap a project and only write things down that will help the reader to achieve that goal. Because a good technical documentation is written simple, excitingly and don't use any long and complicated information. So that also leads me to the next tip use simple language. So don't use any long and complicated texts. Try to avoid any complicated words because you want to sound like uh, an expert or something like this. So that really doesn't help anybody to understand the text and the content. So that is really important. 
Also use diagrams, graphics and videos to illustrate a complex topic whenever it makes sense. Sometimes it's simpler to understand complex topics with a simple graphic or an architectural diagram that will help the reader to understand those complex workflows or complex topics. So it also makes your writing or your documentation much more excitingly if you use some graphics and text, so it makes it more attractive and easy to understand as well. Also, always use examples, especially when you work a lot with commands or instructions, so that will really help you to recap that later and the reader can better understand how to use that command. It also avoids anybody from applying those commands wrongly, so that is very, very important. Let me also show you what software and tools I personally use to write my technical documentation, because if you want to embed any links, graphics or videos, the software needs to be capable of doing those things. So that is really, really important. Also, if you're working in teams or in any company, so that is really important to share this technical documentation with anybody else. So, so if you're just writing technical documentation for yourself, so for example, you want to document your home lab network diagram or you just want to study for your IT certifications and write down something, you probably can use anything you want so whenever you're using a simple text editor like notepad notepad plus plus or anything like visual studio code as i said those simple editors don't have the ability to embed any links videos or something like this but most people just use those simple things to write down something and that's just okay if that works for you it's fine don't forget to back up your software so you can use whatever you like, like a USB drive, external hard drive. I personally, I prefer to upload everything to the cloud. Also some people use version control systems like Git to document anything, so that is also commonly used. So there are thousands of tools available and I think whatever works for you personally is just fine. But I want to show you a different method I personally use to write my technical documentation. So I want to show you a specific tool or software that is automatically backed up in the cloud. And that is also used by enterprise companies. So many big enterprise companies use tools and software from Atlassian, such as Confluence or Jira. So that is a documentation software and Jira is a bug tracking software that is often used in software development. And those enterprise tools offer some amazing features like they have some great templates, they have some great integrations with other software and diagrams, so that is really, really powerful. It probably may seem like a complete overkill to you to use any of these enterprise software, but think of it, it is an advantage to familiarize yourself with these enterprise tools and software because if you work in any kind of company like an enterprise company and you need to document any technical things there, it is very likely that this company will use tools from Atlassian Corp like Confluence or Jira. And it really helps your IT career if you understand how these tools are working and if you familiarize yourself with this software and if you learn how to write good technical documentation. So that is really valuable for your IT career as well. If you're now wondering how could you use those amazing enterprise tools in the cloud just as an individual private person, well, this is really easy because they offer it for free up to 10 users. Of course, there are some limitations when it comes to integration with other tools and software, but you can just use the whole system and the amazing documentation features just for free. As I said, this software is often used in very big environments. Think of companies that have over thousands of employees. So this is a very reliable system and this is the reason why it is so commonly used. If you want to use that software, just go to the homepage at lassian.com. I've put your link in the description below. Just go to products and select Confluence. So this is a collaboration software where you can write good technical documentation. And then you can just click on get it free. Now you can also select if you want to use Jira or Jira Service Desk. So that could be interesting for any kind of development processes like software development where you just want to track bugs or features you want to implement. But um, if you don't want to use that, just click on next. You can see it supports up to 10 users of read agents, includes two gigabytes of storage, has a free community support and it's always free. No credit card needed. So that sounds amazing. Just click on next. And now you can sign up with your personal email address or just use your Google account. I will do that. Now we need to enter a site name. So that can be something familiar to your team or company. So I will just choose the digital life. Then just click on continue and your personal space is creating. 
You can also add other people to your team, but I don't want to do that right now. I just click on next. And now we need to create a space. So in Confluence, everything is organized in spaces. And you can use a team or project or anything you're just working on. For example, just um, create a space for certifications because I want to document my process when I work on IT certifications. Just click on next. So now we will start with a simple page. There are some interesting tutorials here, but I will just um, close this. So that will teach you how to work with the software. If you are new to Confluence, I strongly recommend you to use that. But I will just create an example page. For example, I just want to create a learning uh, path. You can just enter any text here, so you can write any text. And you can also add some interesting things, like you have an editor here where you can just change the basic things here. You can add lists, you can also add tables here, for example, if you want to create like an Excel sheet or something like this. You can embed any files and images, links, you can also add action items, you can also tag other persons here. And you can also add some interesting features with the plus here, so you can add some calendars you can add some uh, connections to the Jira system, quote something, add status, and you can also view more. There are some interesting macros you can use to make more use of that system, So, but that would be too much to uh, show you in this short tutorial. I just want to show you what is possible with this system. If I now click on publish, a new page is now created. Let me also show you some of the amazing features Confluence has, because if you create a new page, you can of course always start with a blank page and create your technical documentation your own. But you can also use some of the good templates they have. And there are a lot of useful templates for architectural design, business processes, workflows, how-to tutorials, user manuals, and so on. So just browse through that list and you can find some really good examples here. Let me show you one example that I think is very useful, for example, the AWS architecture diagram, so where you can define and describe complex cloud environments. And you can see this template is now created. We have a lot of predefined fields where we can just add and change information. We also have a basic structure with goals, architecture, architecture flow, deployment strategy, REST API details with a nice code block, SLAs and action items. So you can also add some action items, tag your name and you create basically your own to-do list where you can refer to in other pages and you can get a list of all actions that are open with a due date and so on. So that is very useful. You can also combine this with other Atlassian products, for example Jira, which is a bug tracking system and you can tag Jira tickets here where you can just click on a link and that will redirect you to the Jira ticket portal. So that is very useful. Of course you can also add other people to that page, adjust the permissions for read and write for specific users and groups. So this is a very powerful tool and this is why I absolutely love it and why I always use it to write my technical documentation. So as you have seen, that is a very powerful software I can strongly recommend to you because I use it to document any kind of process or project I'm working on and I use that also in the company I'm working for, so that is very, very powerful. It probably requires you um, some time to learn how to work with that system, but it's really not that much difficult. And if you're working in a company that uses this software, you can get up to speed really fast because you know how to work with that and how to write good technical documentation. So please give me feedback about this if this was interesting, if you want to see more of that content and also leave me a comment what software do you use to write your technical documentation and if you could get some interesting ideas about that. Also, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed that and if you could learn something important, so that will really help me to understand what kind of content you are interested in. Before I go, I want to thank all of my supporters on Patreon, especially Mason, who is the producer of this show. Without you, the community, this whole project wouldn't be possible at all. So thanks everybody for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, take care of yourself and I see you soon.